All right, all good. All right, here we go. My name is Olga St. Pierre. I am a local real estate agent and, and a member of our community. So thank you so much for joining me today. This is just one of quite a few workshops that I do in our local community. And I'll tell you a little bit more in um, towards the end of our workshop. Just a little bit about me. I have been licensed a, a realtor with our team for the last almost 13 years now. We service clients mostly in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. However, we also have uh, ability to move anyone pretty much anywhere in the United States and Canada. And now that the small the world is getting a lot smaller, we also have ability to help you pretty much just about in uh, all other parts of the world that are tucked away. So please let us know if we can help you because as you can imagine, making a move is very stressful. The goal is to help you first declutter because all of us have to do that. And then we help you move if that is needed. Uh, we also have a pretty extensive concierge service. It is absolutely free. If you are looking for recommendations for contractors or attorneys or financial planners, think of us as your vir virtual yellow pages. A to Z, anyone that you can think of, we probably can make some recommendations so that way you can have some really great suggestions and uh, licensed and screened professionals at your service. So that's a little bit about me. So why are we talking about decluttering? Let's jump right in. I have some statistics that I want to share with you. And uh, let me know if this makes sense to you. I want you to think about these, right? 80% of the time, 80% uh, of the things that we own, we rarely use. So I want you to think about this, whether it's your stuff or things around your house, as you take uh, tidbits and nuggets out of this workshop, I want you to look around when you, you know, leave or you start your weekend soon and see if that makes sense to you. Next, we spend an average of just about an hour a day looking for things. Does that sound like someone you know, or maybe you? And when you put that in the bigger perspective, that is two weeks out of the year. That's two nice vacations. And you know, there are actually companies that make money on those, on, on those people right now, where they do, they uh, sell you a little square that you can put on the back of your phone, and then it rings and beeps, or if you lost your remote, you know, it kind of, you can find it somewhere in your home. But the biggest thing I think that I want you to take away today, one of those things is that decluttering can reduce your housework by up to 40%. So when I originally started working on this workshop three years ago, I really, really love that statistics because I don't know about you, but I love the idea of doing less, right? And being more efficient on when I have to do the house cleaning and the housework, right? So the goal for today is my hope that you, you're going to walk away with some ideas as to why decluttering is not just hip and fun. It's actually something that really we need to be doing on a regular basis. Um, we're all going to do room by room suggestions. I am going to give you some good tips and ideas on how are we keeping selling? What are we doing with stuff we don't want? How do we donate things? And you will walk away with an action plan that you can then take with you and then modify it and make it your own, right? That is the goal is to help you get started. So let's jump right in. Why are we talking about decluttering in the first place? Tell me if these questions make sense to you, right? We, a lot of the times, this is what my clients told me. I don't know where to start, Olga. The stuff grows over time. We all have stuff. And if you think about it, the mail gets delivered to your house six days a week which means that if you don't keep up with it, it's going to keep growing and accumulate. And paper is one of the worst forms of clutter. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. And you know, with time, it becomes too much. It becomes too painful. A lot of the times we don't know where to start. What are we keeping and why? A lot of people are afraid to throw some paper away, for example, because they might need it. It might be something important. And then of course, if we do wanna keep our stuff, how long are we going to keep it for, right? So what happens a lot of the times, we all get overwhelmed and we're like, you know what, I'm, I'm not even going to bother right now. I'm just going to leave till tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes another day and then it becomes another day, right? So this is the, some of these most common questions. So what I'm inviting you to do right now is just think about how stuff affects us. It's really on two different levels and it's very simple. One way is a, a conscious level. 
And the other one is a subconscious level. And what I mean by that is, for example, a lot of the things that we do is on a subconscious level. We don't think about it, right? So you get up in the morning, you grab your shower, and you head into the kitchen, and you start making your coffee, you start, you, know, you start your day. And every one of us has some kind of a routine. And a lot of times we do it on autopilot, right? That is what you do on the subconscious level. But then you get ready to have your coffee, you open up the fridge and guess what? You ran out of milk. And you literally push, put a push on your brakes and you were like, oh my God, okay, I have no coffee. And you actually stop your routine because now it's inter interrupted, right? Your flow of things that you usually do is interrupted. And now you consciously have to think about it and you take your pen and you write milk on your grocery list and you say, okay, I need to add that. I need to run over and I need to get my milk, right? So clutter, a lot of the times is bothering us and um, affecting us on the subconscious level, which is the worst one because subconsciously the, cl the clutter weighs us down. It's like a hamster wheel, right? It's never ending. It kind of sits there somewhere in the back of your head. It just grinds and grinds and grinds. So the research was done and there's facts and there is studies that show that clutter can be a source of stress, depression, health issues. I want you to think about if you are having a hard time sleeping, if your room is, your bedroom is cluttered, right? Family problems and of course, home disrepair. You have a lot of stuff and you keep it there for years and years. You get critters that then love to make home in paper and other things. And then that creates some issues in your home that creates damage and then it can cause and go into even structural problem. So as clutter accumulates, our energy stagnates. And I want you to think about when you think about your own clutter in your own home, does that really sour your mood? Where you walk in, you're like, eh, and you kind of like, right? You sigh and you like, mm, I don't, you know, I don't feel it anymore. And that's what clutter does to us. So based on this research that I read, it's just, it's even, it's that much important to your health and to your mental and your physical well-being to get rid of the clutter sooner than later. So I'm assuming that all of you guys are here with me because there is something that is bothering you and you're ready for that change, right? So let's jump right in. How are we going to do that? we're going to start and work on our plan, okay? Number one, the number one thing that I want you to think about and do is setting up an appointment with yourself for your first decluttering session, right? Whatever it is, whether it's your car, it's your closet, whatever that looks like to you, you're going to set up an appointment with yourself and you're gonna put it in your calendar, you're gonna put it in your phone, however you track those appointments, and you're going to honor that because you are giving yourself the grace and the courtesy. That is just like taking your kids to school or taking your kids to activities or going to a doctor's, right? You're not going to skip it because oh, I don't feel like going, right? You're going to honor that appointment. My recommendation to you is set up an hour. If that really feels overwhelming to you, do at least 30 to 45 minutes. I wouldn't do less because, you know, there, there is a little bit of a prep work. You also need to have a timer. And I recommend that you have a regular kitchen timer or you can use your microwave or the oven. You cannot use your phone. That is one of our biggest distractors because it rings, it buzzes, it dings. When we have this notification, we have that text message, you get distracted. No, you're going to put your phone on silent 100% to avoid those distractions, okay? Next, I'm going to have you change into comfortable clothing, get something to eat and have water. And bonus, when you declutter, it's a workout. So I, to me, and I live for efficiency and ways to make sure that I, you know, I do less and I have better results. If I can work out and declutter at the same time, to me, it's like a win-win. So I hope you agree with me because what you're going to be doing is carrying boxes. You're going to be moving things. You're going to be pulling stuff and going stuff. You're going to be burning up energy. That's a workout. So then I encourage you to put on some music, light your candle, open up a window, whatever makes you happy and helps you and get your energy going. Okay. So decide on that. Next, for those of you that have attended my other workshops, you know that I am a huge believer in notebooks. Right. So here's one of them that I use. And I have a couple of them, depending on what I'm doing, whether it's my family, my, my kids or my business. 
I write everything down and it serves a couple of different purposes. Number one, this is going to be your decluttering book if you want to make it. And you can jot down notes, reminders, and plans in that book. And also it has been proven that if you write stuff down in your book and you get it out of your head, it gives your brain a break. And it's like a mental check that you put on your item that you just kept in your head. It's less stress and less energy on your brain. So let's unload your brain because we keep enough stuff in our head. I think you'll agree with me. All right, so next we are heading into a little bit of prep work. What do we need, right? In order for our one hour to work. Now, I don't want you to overthink it, right? If you don't have boxes, use totes. You don't have totes, use trash bags, okay? Don't think that you have to have this elaborate plan and over, over plan and over get ready and then you don't do anything, okay? I, I know because I've been guilty a lot of this and I, I've put a lot of work into it. Basic tools, trash can, recycle can, some storage bins or boxes or bags. And I encourage you to label those in a couple of different ways. Here's my suggestions to you. Stuff that you're going to keep, donate, undecided, throw away and sell, okay? The goal is in the one hour that you are going to set, get started on your first decluttering plan and your appointment, you're going to have to fill a little bit in each of those bins. You are not allowed to put everything in the undecided pile. That doesn't work like that. The goal is to have a little bit in each one, okay? Some of these guidelines that I'm asking you to keep in mind, you are going to keep the items that bring you joy, make you happy, make you smile and support your vision of where you're going. And all of us, all of us are going forward, right? We're not looking back. And you're going to get rid of and release the things of your past that maybe make you upset, uh, make you feel guilty or sad or something, right? It's okay to put some of those things in the undecided pile because maybe you're not sure what to do with them. But I think that the guide that you will walk away with from today will help you make that decision, okay? After your one hour is done, I encourage you to say, yay, I am done. Pat yourself on the back. Now, if you have time, keep going if you want to. If you don't, I give you kudos at least for starting, right? A lot of the times that one small start, that one push forward is all it takes for you to get moving in the right direction, all right? So once you're done, I'm asking you to use your notebook to put down some of the notes in that notebook, right? You're gonna kind of wrap up your hour and you're going to jot down and summarize on where, where you left off, right? Which room did you work in? Um, where do you need to pick up next time? When is the next time? I encourage you to set up your next appointment with yourself. If you're not sure when to do it, do it on your first day off, first thing in the morning, right? Because usually that is the best time before you get bogged down with some other stuff that you have to do. My other question a lot of the times that I get is, well, where should I start? If you, are, if you have an, an idea of working through your whole house at some point, I encourage you to start with your favorite room, whatever that might be, okay? So your notebook is going to be a reminder. Like if you have to, if you want to give some of the things to your children and your grandchildren, you, you want to write down who is gonna get what and when you're going to call them and the deadline for them to pick up your stuff. You have to give deadline to people, otherwise they will continue to use your house as a free storage facility. Trust me, that is how, it, for some reason, that's what the kids and grandkids apparently do. They keep their stuff in your house forever until you make them get the stuff if they want it, okay? Planning next session, celebrating, kind of jotting down some of the thoughts on how this session made you feel. Again, writing thoughts on paper and getting them out of your head has, it's journaling, right? And journaling is very popular about kind of just figuring things out, okay? So let's talk about room by room. We're going to start in the kitchen. I have some suggestions for you. And also for those of you that have attended my workshops before, what I love to share with you is my um, standards of how do I make my life easier? What can I do and spend and invest the time to do it now to set myself up for success in the future, right? I think all of us will agree that we don't want to do this and tackle this uh, decluttering all the time, right? I, I don't want to declutter my house all the time. So how, what can I do, for example, in my kitchen to set it up in such a way that I do it one time and I spend the most amount of time now that all I have to do is just maintain it with some quick and easy little, you know, 10 minute 
half hour pick me ups. So here, what I have is the suggestions for you, not only how do I clean out my kitchen, but how do I keep it maintained? What systems can I put in my cabinets to help me going forward, okay? So please don't tackle the whole kitchen at once. I encourage you to start maybe, with, maybe just with one cabinet or a couple of drawers. Don't forget about the refrigerator. I have some guidelines here for you. You know, designate spaces where your food is going to be. You know, your condiments may be on the doors. Uh, I had a lot of clients even label spaces for their kids so kids know where to put stuff back. Because when you label and you, you know you're running low, you put it on your grocery list, it's also going to help you and to help you save money, right? Because you know when you're running out of something, you just buy a new bottle and there is no other bottle hidden somewhere else in the back of the refrigerator. I encourage you to use clear glass or plastic storage containers. These are going to be your friends pretty much throughout the house. I also bring it up to you in the bedrooms, in the bathrooms, in the garage, anywhere and anywhere that you can use those because they are, they are sturdy and you can see through them, right? Uh, how many cups and serving utensils do you really need? I encourage you to actually go through all your stuff, through your serving, your cooking utensils. You know, remember, if you use them on a regular basis, at some point they do wear out, right? So the scrapers, I often inspect mine for cracks and make sure that there's no pieces that fell out. Wood utensils also get chipped and they, you know, wood dries with age. So take a look at those and see if anything needs to be thrown away. Then you can give yourself the grace of buying some new and fresh ones and maybe pretty items for your kitchen to serve you well, okay? So airtight food containers, pantry racks to help you store some of your items. This uh, pantry um, pot, uh, pan and pot organizer is amazing and also is going to help you make sure that your pots don't get scratched, right? Because when you stack them one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to scratch that nonstick surface if those are the types of pots and pans that you use. Uh, don't forget to use your doors. You know, say so you can have some of these closet organizers. Uh, container lids uh, storage is, is, is amazing. I don't know about you, but when, you know, I, I still, my mom still does it. There's like a pile of lids in her place above the, um, the, the range hood that I always have to go through and I'm afraid it's going to be rained down on me. And, you know, expandable and stackable organizers are available. Um, I picked all of these items from Amazon. And when you will get the link to the video, I will actually list the link to all these things that if you just want to easily go on Amazon and order them, right, that is the investment in the system in your kitchen to help you set this up for the success for the future. Okay. Heading into bathrooms. I encourage you to also organize what you have in your vanities and use up all the possible space that you have in your bathrooms, right? A lot of us don't have large bathrooms. So let's see how we can maximize the space that we're given. Okay, so number one, you are starting out with your products that you don't use or like, or you haven't used in over a year. Okay, remember lotions and potions and all those pretty bottles that we all get suckered into buying do expire. Okay, and remember a lot of that stuff, most of that stuff is not refrigerated, which means that uh, manufacturers have to put in um, uh, preservatives in those products, right? So preservatives are chem chemicals that keep the products staying well. And the one thing that I kind of encourage you to take away from this particular slide is the fact that, you know, we put these lotions and potions on our body and our skin is the biggest organ, the largest organ that we have. And as a real estate agent, I can help you buy and sell any house that you want. That is what I do. It's a passion of mine. However, our body that we were given when we were born is the only house that we physically live in. We cannot exchange it. We can't upgrade it or do anything. We have to take care of it. So I want you to really think about, about what you put on your body as well as what you put in your body because that body is going to carry you into your golden years as well. Next. Set up your plan. Let's talk about your morning and evening routines. I want you to kind of think about what is it that you do, right? Your routines in the morning, your routine in the evening. And you can use the same plastic containers that I recommended to you in the kitchen to kind of set up your system, okay? This way, all you have to do is just pull it out or have it handy. And it's also gonna help you save time when you are getting ready in the morning and the evening. Don't forget about your makeup. Um, I am a big fan of, making sure that, again, the makeup is the stuff that goes on your face, right? It, ha it has chemicals in it. 
every six months, right? Think about this, make, make it easier for you. We're heading into the holiday season very soon, December and January. That's when a lot of the makeup and potions and lotions are on sale. So give yourself the grace of buying a fresh batch of the things they usually use. And then every six months, you throw that stuff away and you buy fresh items for yourself. Remember, we are caring for ourselves. We're treating ourselves. So every six months is going to be December and July, as an example. That is what I use in my own, in my own um, family. And I have some suggestions for you here on what you can do in terms of some of the, again, stackable bins, ideas for plastic uh, totes, and you know you can use shoe boxes, or you can even use some of these over the door bathroom organizers and definitely use those stackable bins under your sink because we have the height, yet I don't see a lot of people using that height to your advantage. Heading into bedrooms, peaceful place. Remember I mentioned to you that if you don't sleep well in your bedroom, look around and see if it's full of clutter because maybe that is what your brain is telling you, right? We are, when the brain has to process the clutter, it takes work, it's mental effort, it's energy that's being used. So I want you to think about if this is something that is maybe is a concern in your own home, okay? So where do we start in our bedrooms? Yep, we're again heading into our closets, okay? We're going to start there. Now, if you listen to some of these famous uh, organizing gurus on social media and TV, they all tell you if you haven't worn something for six months, you need to get rid of it. Now, I was like, yeah, six months is a little bit on the quick schedule, even for me, right? And I don't have any problems decluttering and throwing stuff. So I decided to give you guys two years. Okay, so two years, and that means you have two seasons to try out something. If you haven't worn it for two seasons, you're probably not going to. So here are some other suggestions for you. If it's something that's out of style, if it's stained, it's in bad shape, it's, you know, it's torn, you don't like it, if it, you don't need it, if it's too small or too large, donate it. Remember, when you're donating something, that doesn't mean that you're throwing it away. You're giving someone else an opportunity to buy something that they do need as well, okay? And then, of course, once you donate and you need to then organize your closet, again, I encourage you to set up your systems for success. And one of the biggest things is organizing your closet and using it to the full capacity that closet can use, right? Again, you go high, as high as to the ceiling as possible. If you have cubbies on the side, make sure you use them. And you can, you know, Closet Made has some great ideas. You can use storage bins, or again, if you want to use the plastic bins that I suggested for bathrooms and kitchens, you can use them in the bedrooms as well. Heading into living rooms and family rooms, what we're going to do here, we're going to start out with paper. Paper is a huge attractor of dust and dust mites. And I know that a lot of people are becoming more and more allergic to dust. Um, like for example, what I am seeing a lot of the times in my buyer, with my buyer clients is they prefer not to have carpet and like less stuff because of allergies to dust, right? A lot of people are putting in pergo hardwood floors pretty much throughout uh, most of the house space or at least downstairs, right? Bedrooms, some people choose to keep carpet, but I'm seeing more and more where it's actually no carpet at all because of the dust allergies. So run through your rooms and think about the stuff that you haven't looked at in a while. And yes, that includes your magazines. If you have old textbooks, if you have books that you have read and no longer want, um, I encourage you that if you do like books and you want to keep them, um, I'll show you when we are done with my screen sharing. I actually love books. I read all the time. It's my passion as well. My books are stored in glass adored cabinets and actually in the back of me. That's where my library is. And that's an another way of keeping the dust off of them. So that way I'm not sneezing all the time. Next, go through your electronics and cords and see what you still, what you don't need or what you do need. Go through your pillows and blankets. If you have furry kids, they love those and they wear and tear them. Uh, encouraged to kind of look and see if some of these things need to be replaced and you can pick up some colorful ones for the new season coming up. And then again, what to take away from this slide is I want you to go through your pictures. How many of you, because I am in the same group, 
take lots of pictures on our phones, and then we do nothing with them. So what I encourage you to do is take some of these pictures that we take of our loved ones, of our pets, of nature, or your hobbies, and you can take them right to CVS or Walgreens, and it's very inexpensive for you to go ahead and print them. And you can print them in many different colors, including black and white. That's actually one of my favorite ways because it's just classic. It just never goes out of style. And you can, can create these collages of the pictures and photos of some people or things that are important to you for very inexpensively, right? You can create uh, you know, collages in the bedrooms. You can even use them as headboards. You can create these collages anywhere in your house. And it's actually one of great ways to update your house very, very inexpensively. You can, for example, like this seven piece of frame pack, you can get on Amazon for $35. You can print any size pictures on in um, CVS or Walgreens. You know, you can do five by sevens, you can do eight by tens, and you can create the most beautiful collage that looks like it was done by a uh, designer. Home office, we're heading there. I am sitting in the back of mine here. And in our home office, it's even more important for you to make sure that you take care of your paper. Remember I said that the mail gets delivered to us, right? <laughs> Snow or rain six days a week, you absolutely have to take care of it. I have some suggestions here for you. Um, my own method of taking care of, of mail is here. Really, there's only three piles that you can, I can put it in. Right, so pile number one is to go through, right? It's my bills for things that I need to read. Number two is my shred, and I'll show you uh, my pile. I literally have a grocery paper bag and I just put stuff in there, or I, a lot of the times I put it right on top of my shredder, which is right next to me. And the other pile is recycle, and that is a grocery bag that I have right here, right? It's, it's from ShopRite. This is where all my recycle is. And then once a week when I have my recycle day, which was today, so this is a new bag, that's when it goes out, out of my house, okay? All right, garage and basement. I encourage you to think about all the space that you are wasting, right? We have walls, we have ceiling in both of those places. I encourage you to invest in some of the shelving that you can hang right up to the ceiling and then you can use hooks to hang lots of stuff and be able to lift stuff off of your floor and hang stuff on those shelves. These things are super heavy duty. You're definitely gonna need some help hanging those things up, but I can guarantee you that some of these are gonna be some of the best investments that you have. Now here, because of those shelves being high up, I encourage you to use clear totes so you can see what's in them. And you can also write on your totes and you can put stuff up there that you use maybe one season, maybe some of your uh, holiday decorations, you know, fishing gear, things like that. And of course, these garage organizers, you can get all of these things on Amazon and also in Home Depot and Lowe's. If you want to go look at some of these organizers, I love them for my shed actually is where I'm using it. All right, let's talk about paper, shredding. What are we keeping? Okay. This is my shredder that I have right next to me. And, uh, what I encourage you to do again, we're setting up a system to help you succeed, not just today, but going forward. You do need a shredder and then you can get an expensive one on Amazon and you need trash bags, okay? So don't make it overcomplicated. I bought a, a, a box of trash bags that I have specifically for shredding. So this way I don't have any excuses to say, oh, I don't have a bag, I can't shred it. No, don't give yourself any reasons to get out of this, okay? You have to shred stuff to protect yourself. If you have any doubts, go ahead and shred it. I shred a lot, most of the things uh, in the unit. It, it's going to give you that peace of mind that you're looking for. To, should I shred it? You know, should, is this, if you are doubting, go ahead and shred it. Okay, this next slide, I encourage you to actually print it out, take a screenshot. If you want me to mail it to you because you don't have a printer, you need to let me know, okay? How long should I keep certain papers? Okay, um, I am going to let you review the top ones and I'm right now going to focus on the bottom one. Okay, the bottom one is keeping stuff forever. What are we keeping forever? Okay. Things that are difficult to replace, things that are extremely important to you, valuable documents. Okay, and I want you to think about this 
and look at it as a bigger picture, okay? Adoption papers, wills, powers of attorneys, birth and death certificates, things that you have to go to the government to replace that takes weeks and months, okay? Your passports, your uh, pension retirement documents, your um, vaccination records, mortgage records, deeds to your car, to your house, right? Your, your diplomas. This is your keep forever. And I want to make sure it's protected at all times pile. Okay. Now, please make sure that you invest in one of two things. Either you buy a safe, you can get it on Amazon, you can buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's going to cost you maybe hundred to two hundred dollars depending on the size that you need but you have to keep these documents in the fireproof safe if god forbid something happens to the place that you live in now okay if you don't want to keep it at home you can always rent the safety deposit box at your bank it might cost you a couple hundred dollars but they're going to keep it there safe and then you don't have to worry about it so one of the other things that i encourage you to do in on and put it in your keep forever pile is your personal home inventory list and the video. And this is something that I started recommending to all of my clients. God forbid something happens to your house. If you have to go through the house adjuster and go through your insurance to get reimbursed for the personal items that you had in your home, and you have to now do a mental checklist, having a home inventory list where you did a video of every single room is going to make your life so much easier. Okay, so let me know if this page you need me to put in the mail to you, I would encourage you to laminate it or put it into a like a protective sleeve, you know, like a plastic sleeve and keep it in your office, like hang it on your filing cabinet or maybe even just put it in your fridge. Okay, so wherever it is that you want to keep it. All right, now we are heading into the category of, okay, what do we do with our stuff? Okay, so the first category is how do we throw all this stuff away? What I encourage you to do is to use all the free tools that you have available now, and that is your regular trash and recycle days. I make it a point at every recycle and trash day in my, in my township, it's actually twice a, a week, to throw something away and recycle something. So I encourage you to do that. This is like a little bit of a deadline for us every week. Right, so every Sunday I have to throw something away and then every Wednesday I have to do that, okay? Then town, a lot of the townships have um, bulk trash days and a lot of the counties, especially in the fall right now, are having some of their uh, bulk collection days as well as electronic recycling hazard trash days, okay? Remember, you cannot pull electronics to the curb anymore. There is now specific ways of recycling those items make sure you're just being mindful and looking at the schedules for those events. And again, you put it on your calendar and you start collecting those items, whether it's in your shed or your mudroom or maybe in your garage. Donation. I have created this really great guide for you if you want to be more intentional and specific on the things that you want to donate. Okay, This is going to be sent to you again. I just want you to know that you are getting a copy of this. So if you would prefer to deal with certain companies that may be like dress for success is for women who are getting back into the workplace and you have some suits that you want to donate and maybe some of the nicer dressed items, it can go directly to that company, right? So depending on what you have, you, but you can, you know, we always have our trusty Salvation Army, Purple Heart, and some of our local thrift stores that you can use, okay? So depending on what are some of your interests, maybe you have a lot of things, a lot of glasses. I know that Lions Club has bins in many different places where you can donate some of your glasses that maybe you don't, you no longer use because your prescription has changed. Okay, let's talk about these important things. These are the things that make us feel guilty make us feel emotional. These are the things that we refuse to get rid of because we feel like we are letting our family, our loved ones down, right? So examples are greeting cards that we got in the mail, kids, our kids' artwork, our grandkids' artwork, things that we have gotten that was passed down to us from our aunts and our grandparents and great-grandparents, things that were in the family, right? And you feel responsible for keeping those things because they were passed down to us. So I have some suggestions for you here. Number one, you can't keep it all. 
right? You can't. So rather than having those items sit in the attic somewhere, I encourage you to keep a few meaningful things that you truly love, having your family keep a few meaningful things out of that whole collection. Take photos of the rest and you can keep them on your phone or in some other safe place. And then you can then donate the rest. And remember, again, when you're donating someone, that means that you're giving someone else the opportunity to find something special for themselves, right? Um, photos and albums are a big deal, right? It is time to digitize them because the albums go bad and they turn yellow and the pictures can deteriorate. So I encourage you to scan them all. You can do it yourself in the library. You can send them out. There's tons of different services that are available online that I have listed for you here, listed for you here. DVDs, CDs, you can donate them to the library. VHSs, unfortunately, nobody, uh, nobody wants anymore. I would just go ahead and recycle them. Selling and who can help you. Those are important for some of our older audience, maybe that may need some help. Um, a lot of times I always ask and start out and say, okay, do you have any family or friends who can help you? However, if not, if you need some muscle, right, to take some boxes from the attic or maybe bring them up from the basement, or if you are overwhelmed and you have a lot of things, we have personal organizer recommendations as well as estate sale companies that can come in and help you get everything organized and sell the items for you. Of course, if you're talking about selling some of these things to make some money from the stuff that you have. We have some of the traditional ways of going through eBay. Uh, there's tons of uh, great suggestions on social media. Uh, Craigslist, Facebook sale groups are great. There's apps that you can use. Next door, which is local to your neighborhood. If you have some things that are more like designer and some higher end, you can use Poshmark. And of course, we always can use traditional ways of having an estate sale, moving sale, or garage sale. All right, so here is your action plan. I know I gave you a lot of food for thought, right? And we're about 40 minutes in, which is a lot of information that I provided to you. I'm asking you to find a notebook for your decluttering and call it as you wish, decorate it if you want. See, mine are decorated by my daughters. And jot down your thoughts. And here are some questions that I want you to ask yourself. Why are you doing this in the first place? Is there a time frame in mind that you need to keep, right? Maybe some of you are thinking about making a move and all of us eventually do have to move at some point somewhere. And we always have to start with the stuff that we have. And what many people don't realize is how much stuff you accumulate over the years. So what I encourage you to do is if you're thinking about making a move and it could be five years down the road or my kids are still in school, start doing a little bit at a time now. Don't wait until you have to because most of us do not realize how much stuff we have until we start going through it, okay? So do you need help to organize and help you start doing stuff? We have some suggestions for that. Uh, when would you like to be done? Why if you have a deadline? And just jot down some of your thoughts on your decluttering ideas, okay? I'm also a big fan of using painter's glue tape because if you have some big items, let's say you want to get rid of some furniture, and if that is the case, I encourage you to start with furniture first because it's usually the hardest to get rid of because it's big, it's bulky, and you need to make special uh, provisions for it. You can use the blue tape to mark the items that you want to get rid of, or you can use the tape to keep the items, right? So it's, it's up to you. And actually on Amazon, I know that they sell this uh, painter's tape in all different colors. So if you would like to have different color markings to help you kind of get everything organized on paper and in your head, then you can definitely order it from Amazon. Next, again, I want you to think about your next date and time to get started. We are at Thursday. That means that Saturday morning, if you're Saturday and Sunday off, would be a great day for you to start, hint, hint. And I encourage you to use the handy room by room guide from this workshop to help you out. So what's next? Please allow me to help you. I also love seeing people's pictures of the befores and afters. So I encourage you to take those pictures. And of course, copy of this workbook that you're seeing in front of you is going to be sent to all of you. So don't worry, you're going to get a PDF copy of it. If you need me to send you a printout of that, you know, what to keep papers, let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. 
And of course, you can get a recording of this workshop and all of our other past workshops on my YouTube channel. It's everything is free. I'm always happy to share for our community. And um, my schedule of our other upcoming workshops is at Live with Olga. So very easy to use. So I'm going to stop sharing now. And I'm going to see if anybody has questions. I hope I gave you some good food for thought and some helpful tips. All right, let's see. Kevin said, a place for my stuff by George Carlin. Okay. Is that, is that a song? It is? It's a classic, oh, hang on. It's a classical joke. If you ever oh. seen George Carlin stuff. It's oh, my stuff. okay, that's right. He's a comic. Okay. Your crap. <laughs> you know, when you go into, when your friend visit, ask you to come over uh, for the night, now where, does, where do I put my stuff? So it's, I think it's one of the things you have to watch this. It's so classical. It's on YouTube. I'm going to write this down so I can pull it up. George Collins stuff is, and it's right. It's my stuff, your shit. <laughs> or put it politely, your crap. Okay. So watch that. It's, you know, it's very, you know, how, you know, it's unfortunate we have three industry we're supporting. One is buy, it's, it's so easy to buy things. Yeah. To bring it home. The second industry is the organization on the industry. Now we've got crap all over the place. We need to organize it. <laughs> and the third industry we're supporting is called get rid of this. One of the hands you got junk. Yes. So that's my thought of, you know, you, 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 how, how, how we are supporting three different industries. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing. I'm writing it down. Uh, and I know that we have a bunch of people that joined us a little bit later. Uh, some of your names are not the names of your Zoom. I just want to make sure that when you registered, you provided us with your email because if I don't have it, I cannot send you the workbook. So if you you are welcome to put your email in the chat box, you can send it to everyone. You can do a personal one. That would be great. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. VHS can be recycled where? I put them in my recycle bin because it's all plastic. So I, I would just put it in your regular recycling. Uh, Francis, you said that by Burlington County recycled that I should yeah. put them out. No, I called them because my husband used to collect so many. Oh, really? And I called them and she said, oh, no, throw them out. Really? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, because I was about to recycle them. She goes, we don't, nobody wants that stuff. The, the okay. plastic that was utilized is not good for anything, for any recycle process. Good to so, know. Yeah, I just, you know, I found out because I needed to do something besides everything else I have to do. <laughs> Don't we all? Okay, got it. I'm, I know what, I'll update my presentation because that's good to know. Because I was, you know, I'm looking at them like, okay, it's plastic, right? So, all right, cool. Anita said, please send me the list of how long to keep the items. Okay, perfect. Uh, keep. Verna says the same thing, okay. All right. I hope that you guys found this helpful. I try always try to make this as human as and as uh, simple as possible, right? Because we always have to start somewhere. So, does anyone else have any other suggestions or ideas that I can add to my workshop? Yep. Yeah. Well, this is Fran. Um, uh -huh. this, this whole process is daunting. Um, I worked full time for forty five years. I'm not working anymore. Um, I've been in this house where I'm residing now for oh, 36, 37 years. And when I was working full time, I was raising kids and I didn't worry about everything in this house. I was just trying to survive in the outside world. And this process freaks me out. 
I mean, I was a I was a businesswoman, but I can't manage decluttering. <laughs> just, <laughs> I think we're all in that boat. You know, we all have other priorities. And and so I was listening to you and I'm going to tackle this. I have to tackle this. Um, but I'm going to do it in very tiny pieces. I love your idea about an hour. That's all I can emotionally handle. Well, you know, the 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 common saying is how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? One bite. So that's why you do one drawer at a time. And you know what? Once you do that and you accomplish that, it's going to make you feel so much better. And it's another drawer. Yep. And then another drawer and then another box. Huh. Just a little bit at a time is how we all get it accomplished. Yeah, it's just, it's it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Now, yeah. I find your sh workshop very helpful. I keep attending it because it refreshes my memory. Every time I attend your workshop, I go get motivated for a, few, a week, maybe. So I have a target day in my, in four years, I'm going to get rid of 80% of the stuff I don't want it anymore. I don't need it. I don't need it. So the reason I'm doing that is because when my wife and I no longer in this world, my daughter has to clean up my shit. Yes. <laughs> and the, the more I could do, the less, because, you know, I, you know, right now I went through the stage, I'm very organized. The stuff I can't throw, I don't want to throw out, I'm not throwing out. But in four years, I figured if I don't use it by then, they are needed, donated, got rid of, or whatever. So that's my target date. That's why I attend your, it refreshes my memory. And I think we go to the habit of saying, oh, no, I can't do it today. One day, you're going to motivate us and say, oh, get my ass off the chair. Let's go do something for an hour. <laughs> so. I'm not asking for a lot. I'm just asking you for an hour. For now, right? Let's just get started for an hour. Now, everyone, I do this workshop every month. If it's going to help you to stay motivated, come back every month and we're going to talk about it again. Because I, you know, I'll tell you, it helps me. And we talk, I talk about this with my clients all the time. And I still declutter stuff all the time. Uh, last year during the pandemic, I did a lot because I had to stay busy and, and, and keep my mind occupied when, you know, we were sheltered in place. So I, I, you are welcome to join me every month because we do a decluttering, <laughs> this decluttering class every month. And then every month, we can talk about what you have accomplished. How many drawers did you do last month? I'm happy to keep you accountable <laughs> if that is what it's going to take. Yeah, it'll be like- so I took your advice yeah. and last time I attended, I, you know, we like to save what save things. We go on a vacation, we buy things, we go but the, we don't want it because we're saving for a better day, something, a special time. And before you know it, we got it all colored up. So the last time I heard from your thing is, I went to my house and find out I got six bottles of scotch that I could drink down. I got some of my favorite clothes that I'm gonna wear, not say for a special day. Oh, well, wait, uh, wait, Kevin, look. Do you see my shirt? Yes, It's butterfly. one of my dressy, my dressy <laughs> shirts, right? <laughs> yeah. And I wear it the whole day today home in the yeah. office, out on appointments. And for you, everybody, it's sparkly. It's special to me. And you know what? I don't save it for a special day because I want today to be special. So I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Go through your closet and see what you have is something that you've put aside for the special occasion and create a day as a special occasion day, whatever it might be. You, did you know that every day there's like a two or three different holidays that you can celebrate? Every day. So pick a holiday tomorrow and put your pretty shirt on and say, well, I'm wearing it in honor of hot dog day or whatever it is. You can create your own holiday if you want. So yeah, I'm actually wearing one of my special shirts because that's what I want to do. Absolutely. So Anita said that she's going to join our next workshop and then she's going to let us know how much she has done. So Anita, I'm counting on you. I'm going to put a check mark next to your name. So you better be on the next workshop. 
Uh, let's see, Olga, if one hires a professional declutterer to help get rid of stuff, how can they help to go through paperwork, which is my worst problem? They definitely can. I have a couple of professional organizers that can do that and they do it by the hour. And I think if you try and do, again, same thing with paperwork, you take a stack of this big and that's all you start out with, right? You have your, you have your mountain of paperwork but you start out with just this much, one inch at a time, and you go through it and you, you know, separate it in piles is how I would do it. Start out there. And if it still seems overwhelming, I'm happy to recommend you someone who can help you with that because that's, it's their job is to kind of help you focus, keep you focused. And, you know, if you want to do it for an hour or two, there's your opportunity if, you know, paperwork is your biggest project. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Yeah, Terry said that she's as a daughter going through this project right now and helping out. And you know what, it's, it's a lot more prevalent than a lot of people think. I have a house right now that I don't even know when they're going to be done. It's a colonial full of stuff and they're slowly decluttering little by little. Sharon, did you have something you wanted to say? You raised your hand. I oh. did, I just put it in the chat box. Oh, you did? Okay. I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Uh, let's see. Did I say anything? Did I mention? Sharon? Not yet. I just did it. Oh, okay. Perfect. Let me look real quick. I, I don't see it. I'm sorry. Am I looking? Am I missing something? Um, I think I hit it. Well, I'll just, I'll just say it then. Oh, I have yeah. just trying to figure out the best way to get rid of some heavy, like furniture. I have an old futon I want to get rid of, and it's just really heavy. Um, I've got a, a lift chair that was my mom's who, uh, it's been sitting in my garage since she passed away in 2013. Um, yeah. And I just don't know the best like avenues to, uh, get rid of bigger stuff like that some of that stuff you can try and get rid of on uh, facebook marketplace if you are on facebook or if you're not on facebook you can use one of the apps that i recommend that it's very easy to take a picture and you just post it right on the app and people will come to your garage and take it and if you just want to get rid of it i would suggest that you start with some of the thrift stores salvation army and the other places they are picky about the furniture that they do take. And I know that a lot of the furniture has to be on the first floor because they don't have the ability to haul it down. So a couple of different options, but I'll tell you that furniture is a lot of times is the hard, some of the hardest things to get rid of. So I always suggest to people start with that first and then kind of work to, towards the smaller things. Okay, thank you. Sure. I saw somebody else had a raised hand. Little. Hey, did I miss anybody? Elizabeth, did you did you say wanted to say anything or no? Oh, there you just, are. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> I'm sitting in part of my mess there. I'm ah, everybody, my... look. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We all have mess. <laughs> so, um, no, I'm dealing with. My mother died six years ago, inherited her house, have diverted going through everything, put it in the neighbor's basement, moved their grandparents into my mom's house. Now my brother wants to sell it, which I'm fine with, but which means I have to deal with all of that. And it's all in Georgia. And I've got furniture and I've got crap. And it's the guilt, the guilt, the guilt, the guilt, and the story. Because you pick it up, you look at it, and you go, well, mama said that my great-grandmother, you know, got this from her father, and it was made, and blah, 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 blah. And here's your one milk glass goblet, and here's your one this that doesn't go with anything, but somehow you're supposed to make a vignette or get rid. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Like Frank said, I'm overwhelmed. 
So let me ask you a question that goes back to the slide about things that are important to us and their families, right? How, is there anything in that pile that you keep thinking about for the last six years and say, I wish I could go to Georgia and, and bring it back to me because I miss it, I need it? I'm bad on the unmute and mute, sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> you'd think I could do this by now. There are a few things, but most of it, yes, I can depart with and have no qualms about it. And um, it's just a matter of getting it done. And do you, do you have any other family members that have things that are important to them in that? Not, a, there's a couple of things, but most of it is mine. My brother took his and my niece took what she wanted and everybody took kind of what they wanted. And I lived in New Jersey, so. Pretty so much all of mine went in the next door neighbor's basement, which is the most hard, hard, hard place to get to. I'm sorry, my dog barks. No, it's okay. She, they're contributing. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth, um, here's an idea, and I, um, and uh, if you have physically and emotionally gone through all the stuff, I'm, I'm trying to listen to you attentively. Um, there are companies that will come and clean it out. I mean, here in Medford, we have a company, I, gosh, I can't remember the name here in New Jersey, Burlington County. And I think it's called a and I, I can't remember. They come and just take everything. And then they decipher what they're going to do with it. I don't know the deal. I don't know the negotiations. I don't know if they pay. But I'm just wondering whether there are any companies in the Georgia marketplace where the house is situated that you could contact and they could come. And if you were if you were to be in, you know, to be there, they they show pictures online on Facebook where they have just going. You can always tell it's an elderly person and they just. It's like they use a vacuum and take it out. So I would suggest that you see if there's any companies down in Georgia that do that. Thank you for that idea. I really, truly appreciate it they very just, much. They just empty it out. And then they just, <laughs> I guess, because they're expert at it, they know what is sellable. And so, they, you know, they have a building over here in Medford where people can go on Saturday mornings and, you know, find their treasures, like what Olga was talking about, you know? Oh wow! Well. You know, you know that there's places in Georgia like that. You know, that. <laughs> Elizabeth, one hundred percent. There are estate companies that are around the area, and if you want to message me with the area where the house is, I can help you find a couple of them. They okay. charge a commission, but they will come in, sort everything, hold the sale, advertise it, oh. control the traffic, and then they will. It's 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 amazing what they do. It's hard work but they mm -hmm. know what they're doing. And then if you, if you have some antiques or important pieces, they usually have the dealers that come through first, they mm -hmm. buy stuff first and then they price everything. I was just at an estate sale last week that was ran in my local area. Those women were, they spent seven weeks getting it all together because the lady was an artisan. She was an artist. The stuff that they had, she had in that house, you know, it took them seven weeks just to sort it out. So if you think that you have to go there and do it yourself, you absolutely don't have to. So we can help you with some connections that I have in Georgia to, for that. Great. Yeah, yeah, I have your email, so I'll reach out okay. to you and uh, you can let me know. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you all. Yep. And I'll then, be back next month too. <laughs> all right. And you know what? 1-800-JUNK is, is a company that I have on my list, but I kind of use them as a last not, resort because they're not they're cheap. Not. If you want to fill the truck, it's like $800. Yeah. Right. But if you really need to get rid of stuff and you have no other ways, but that's definitely a, um, an option. All right. Anybody else has anything else to add? I love these conversations at the end because those are usually the best. Sharon, your hand is still up. Anything else you want to add? I just want to make sure that I don't miss anyone. If you want to type it up too, that's fine. Oh, good. Uh, you hold decluttering. Do you hold decluttering every month? Yeah. 
I do because it's so popular. Uh, next workshop, let me see. Hang on one second, let me look. Ow. I'm already signed up for another one that's a little later. <laughs> so Olga, mm -hmm. this will be on the um library website no you can go to my link okay yeah, cool. I'll, you can just okay. go to my link and register we Excellent. we do a lot of things with the library as well okay all righty so today's the 16th so next month we have so decluttering next month is october 7th october 7th at 10 a.m And is that via is that via your link or is that via the library? You can I don't know if this is through the library or not. If you All right, I'll just so All right. yeah, the links are the same. Whatever cool. the library sends is what you you get. So, but just head over right. to the calendar. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Oh my god. Awesome. Thank you so much. Here's the link for you if you guys want to click on it and use it. Just you want you want to take a screenshot of it. And then for the rest of this month, we're talking next week is effective, cost-effective tips and tricks for home renovations. We're talking about preparing for a move, uh, decluttering, and then um, heading into like October, November, prepping for next year we're going to do. So there's, there is a workshop that I do every week. So you're welcome to pop in and talk and, and so forth. Okay. All right, everybody. I hope you found this this interesting and uh, and uh, yes, I'm glad. I I love doing this and having conversations with all of you. So, all right. Have a good night, everyone, and I will see you hopefully next week or next month. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right, take care. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you.